Good afternoon, Dylan here. This is discussion board three for week six in our American Revolution. And for this class, I chose to look at Thomas Jefferson and his legacy on education. And the reason why I went this direction is because most people automatically think of Thomas Jefferson and his legacy when, the, when looking at things like the founding of our nation as far as the Declaration of Independence, our Constitution, our ability to have religious freedom thanks to his work with the Virginia um, government to ensure that Virginia, Virginians had religious liberties, as well as the whole issue surrounding slavery. So I wanted to go a different route. I wanted to bring something forward that maybe most people forgot about, and that is he had a large role in our education system. And as a Christian historian, it is our responsibility to commit to an honest and objective investigation of our research subject. So with that being said, Thomas Jefferson was actually heavily influenced by John Locke and his theories and ideas. And that's not only seen in, in our Declaration of Independence or our Constitution, but he actually took those ideas and added them into the educational beliefs that he held. It was his belief that men needed to have an education to perpetuate our democracy and to ensure that our government continued to stand and be in the hands of the people. And for him, he placed a high value on education in terms of the classics. He was a very high proponent of learning the ancient languages, such as Latin and Greek. He believed that if men learned those languages, they would be able to go and read people like Homer, Thucydides, Herodotus, in their native original um, transcription, versus having to read a transcribed language that, you know, we all know when languages are transcribed, sometimes a, a word is changed or the meaning of a word is changed. And so for Thomas Jefferson, it was go back and read the original. And if you can read the original, then you have a better foundation and understanding of what was really going on at that time. So for him, classical languages, classical histories were all very important. David C. Dalton and Thomas Hunt in their um, article, Thomas Jefferson on the Education as revealed through a textual reading of his letters, argues that Thomas Jefferson believed that a democracy could only exist through the grace of an educated populace. And other historians have confirmed and suggested the same ideas. One of those uh, historians is Norbert Sand, who reaffirmed this very theory in the classics in Jefferson's theory of education. He states that Jefferson recognized that the supreme importance of a democratic government was of universal education, that men must be able to think clearly and independently, for in doing so, they would perpetuate this democracy. And Thomas Jefferson himself reaffirmed this in a letter of October 28, 1813 to John Adams, where he says that education gives the masses a higher ground of moral respectability that is necessary for their safety and orderly government, and that it must be a keystone of the arch of our government. In other words, Thomas Jefferson was saying, you know, without education, how is our government going to stand? Now, in Gordon Mercer's Thomas Jefferson, A Bold Vision for American Education, he argues that his ideas were similar to his ideas of separation of church and state. That it was his belief that um, public universities and public schools needed to be separated from the ecclesiastical control. And that while universities may continue to have that ecclesiastical curriculum, he believed that it needed some reforming and add and have things such as mathematics, physics, anatomy, medicine, economics, law, and fine arts added to it. And with this understanding, it's easy to see how Thomas Jefferson could have been considered an innovator in our public school education. Because if you look at today and you look at our system today, a lot of the things that Thomas Jefferson firmly believed are still actually in place. You still have schools that put an emphasis on learning those classical languages like such as Latin. You do still have those modern languages, our French and our Spanish, which were another thing that Thomas Jefferson actually included and believed needed to be included in our educational system. But you also have that whole classical histories where we go back and we study things like Homer and the impact that some of that made on our, not just our nation, but our world as large, you know, you know as a whole. So thank you. Hopefully you'll have a great day.